turn to blend our voices to sing together. And this morning we are singing from Mrs. Amit, beginning with in number 22. You are welcome to the house of the Lord on this beautiful Lord's Day. We are looking into God who has made the outside to be sunny and bright. It can as well be the same in our soul. And the Lord is able to do that for each and every one of us. Of course, we want to open our heart for him to shine through so that that can be our testimony today. We're extending a similar warm welcome to all our internet audience, wherever you may be. We pray that the Lord who is with us here will bless you as well. But just in case you are able to come in, you are watching the Apostolic Faith Church Service, the branch at Bexley. We are located on number 13, Penn Hill Road. DA53EP. You have just missed on the prelude that we have from our choir. Jesus paid it all and the quartet just before I got up to lead these congregational songs, um, which is on redeemed. But you can as well just join us now.
to take part in the blessing that we believe the Lord has prepared for us today. In case you are unable to do so, you can just join us wherever you are, and we believe the Lord will bless you too. Okay, we sing with this uh, special song of um, devotion and worship, holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty. Let's take verses 1, 3, and 4. Verses 1, 3, and 4, after the introduction, we sing this um, with praising our heart to the Lord together.
thinking, good thinking. I gave the ladies 100%, and then the men, 100%. Six, five, nine will be our last song before prayer. 659, my Jesus, I love thee, I know thou art mine. of this week, we got the news that um, the pastor of our church in Paris, Brother Matthew Bobo, was hospitalized. I managed to speak to him on his hospital bed, and the news got back to us that um, the diagnosis wasn't that looking good, but we have a God in heaven. And during the course of the week, all the um, ministers have been contacted and the saints of God that have been at several meetings during the week in every branch. We have been calling upon our great God of heaven who has never failed us. Amen. And we got the news towards this um, weekend that he has improved greatly. Yeah. But we want the Lord to complete that work. Yeah. And that is the reason why I'm asking that we all join our hands together, combine our faith together, yes. and look up to heaven mm. on his behalf, yeah. as well as all others who are even here today, they have managed to come. They have one ailment, one illness, one disease or the other, that today, Jesus will come down, Amen. touch Brother Bobo, Amen. touch all those that are here, Amen. And all those that are joining us on the internet, everyone that is sick, in need of special touch yes. from heaven, that the Lord God Almighty will come down and do that even yes. right now. Yes. Shall, shall we pray? Yes. 
thank you. We bless your name. Bless your name. We look up to you. God the Father, in the name of God the Son, in the name of God the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Oh, God. 
Chapter 6, verse 1 to 8. Micah, chapter 6, verse 1. Hear ye now what the Lord saith. Arise, content thou before the mountains, and let the hills hear thy voice. Hear ye, O mountains, the Lord's controversy, and ye strong foundations of the earth. For the Lord hath a controversy with his people, and he will plead with Israel. Three. O my people, what have I done unto thee? And wherein have I wearied thee, testifying against me? Testify against me. Four. For I bought, brought thee up out of the land of Egypt and redeemed thee out of the house of servants. And I sent before thee Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. Five. O oh, my people, remember now what Balak, king of Moab, consulted, and what Balaam, the son of Beor, answered him from Shittin unto Gilgal, that ye may know the righteousness of the Lord. 6. Wherewith shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before the high God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves of a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams or with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression? the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul, eight and the life. He hath showed thee, O men, what is good, and what does the Lord require of thee, but to do justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. God bless you. Under his wings, I am safely abiding, though the night deepens and tempted are wide. Still I can trust him, I know he will keep me, he has redeemed me, and I am his child. Under his wings, under his wings, who from his love can sever. Under his wings, my soul shall abide, safely abide forever. Under his wings, what a refuge in sorrow, how the heart yearning return to his rest. Often when earth has no balm for my healing, there I find comfort, and there I am blessed. Under his wings, under his wings, who from his love can sever. Under his 
his wings my soul shall abide, safely abide forever. and joy meant. There will I hide till life's trials are Sheltered, protected, no evil can harm me. Resting in Jesus, I am safe evermore. Under his wings, under his wings, who from his love can sever. Under his wings, my soul shall abide, safely abide, safely abide, safely abide forever. Yes. Shall we return to the Bible reading that we've just listened to, the book of Micah, chapter 6, just want to retreat Verse 8, that says, He hath shown thee, O man, what is good. And what doth the Lord require of thee, but to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. Where did God show that to the children of Israel? If we refer to our lesson, or actually the memory verse of this morning, taken from the book of Deuteronomy, the 10th chapter, reading verse 12. And now, Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee but to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul, to keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes, which I command thee this day for thy good. We are all familiar with requirements. It's a necessary condition, something that is necessary, needful, a demand, something that is essential, some conditions that you must meet, you must have. From experience, this comes up early in life with many of us, and some of us may be identified with some of these, these issues of requirement. I know that um, to go to school, you have to be certain age to start certain level of education. For you to have certain jobs, you must have certain you must meet certain requirements. If you don't want to disobey the law to drive, you must meet certain requirements. In buying and selling of properties, certain requirements. You want to travel abroad, you can't just pack your load and say, I'm just going. Certain requirements in some situations. I actually understood that even to join the police force, you have to be certain height. You are excluded if your height is certain level. Question of requirement. Before I turned 60, it has always been my desire, my thought to have freedom pass. I mention this every time that you mean some people, you're traveling free when some of us are paying a lot of money every month, and I desire in my heart, God, please, let me be 60. 
And when God made that to be possible, that's a requirement. Try it if you are less than 60. Apply and see what happens. That's a requirement. You can't just say, this thing that Isaac has got, this pass, to now travel free, you just want it. Sorry. Unless you are 60 and above. And the requirement may even change. It may go to 65 by the time it comes to your turn. Okay, it may reduce by the time it comes to your turn. Whichever way you want to look at it. But I know some things are changing. I think the important point I'm making here is that God too has requirements that we must meet. If you want to marry, we tell young people, you don't just get up, I've now reached a certain age to marry, and I want to marry. No, 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 there are certain requirements you must meet. Without which, well, of course, you may go ahead and do whatever you want to do, but we will let you know these requirements as far as marriage is concerned. You want to be a pastor. You want to be a leader. You want to be a bishop. In the Bible, God states certain requirements that you must meet in order to be able to do that. You want to um, be a Christian to be used in God's service. God has certain requirements. These requirements are from God himself that must be in place. You want revival in your soul. You want revival in your congregation. There are certain requirements that we must make sure that we, we make. You want to enter heaven. There are certain requirements. All God's requirements are essential. As a management educator, before I resigned to be a pastor, we teach managers when it comes to selection, recruitment and selection. When people uh, apply for a job and we prepare the job analysis and the job description and then the personal, personal specification for the job, we put certain things as essentials. We put certain things as desirable. The essential you must meet. You must just have. So when we teach these managers, when you are trying to recruit and you get all the applications in, you first of all sort things out in terms of those that have met the essential. And I was thinking about this. In God's requirement list, there are no desirable. All God's requirements are essential. All God's requirements are the things that we have to meet. We must meet them if you want to be blessed um, by God. There are some requirements that we consider unreasonable. And that is true. I was in Manchester this last weekend. And I was trying to put a, a pastor there through to conduct his first wedding. And um, I decided not to take part in doing all the necessary paperwork that we have to do for the government. So I told him, this is what you have to do, this is what you have to do, this is what you have to do. And he said to me, why don't we just fill one copy and make photocopy instead of filling everything in uh, original, 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 original. And I said, that is the requirement. You have to fill out everything. We are asked, they are the same thing. Truly, you could have filled just one and photocopy and present the copies, but sorry, mate. <laughs> and more especially because you don't even use ball pen, you use fountain pen. You have to use this special ink that the registry supply to us. Uh, it takes time. It takes hours, hours to just fill out all of these things. But that is requirement. I remember before I left Nigeria, when you apply for a job, they be asking for 12 copies of your CV. And I used to wonder, why do you want 12 copies of my CV? Can't I just give you one? And if you want to make 100 copies, that you can. But if I want that job, I must meet that requirement. I think the point I'm making here is that there are some requirements that we consider unreasonable. But the people that set those requirements, God, in many instances, in all instances, concerning him, that set these requirements, he has a reason for doing so. Yeah. 
just during this course of this week, practical, another practical example, talking to someone in my office, um, this law that the government has put in place of um, having a, a extra room in your house. And um, she was telling me that um, um, she would like to downsize instead of having two extra rooms or one extra room, just give me one room apartment that the government could not give. But unfortunately, this room that is not occupied in our house, she has to be paying for it. And I was saying, that doesn't make sense. But sorry, do you want to live in government provided accommodation? That is what they have for you. And if you think you are angry, you don't want it, pack out and go and buy your house. I think the point I'm making here is that there are some requirements that may look unreasonable. And we may not know the reason why those uh, requirements are put in place, but there are reasons for them. All that we are expected to do is to just make sure that we meet up with that requirement. In the passage that we have read, God is saying that I have a controversy. I have an issue with you, my people. Here, in verse 2, the Lord hath a controversy with his people. O oh, my people, verse 3, what have I done unto thee? Wherein have I wearied thee? Testify against me. God was trying to say here, I have done everything possible, and I'm not requiring you to pay me back anything with all that I've done to you. Well, tell me, testify, let me know. Where did I go wrong? What did I do? Why are you doing this to me? Why are you uh, behaving like this to me? Why are you paying me back like this? What did I require of your hand? Have I required something that is too great? Something that you cannot do? Something you cannot afford? The word of God tells us in 1 John 5, 3 that the commandments of God are not grievous. The commandments of God are not burdensome. The commandments of God are not unreasonable. But these people, they have revolted, they have rebelled against God. And do they have any cause to do so? God was even trying to say, okay, maybe you have a reason for doing so. Tell me, testify. Say your own. I'm saying my own. Testify against me. The reason that you have for doing something like this to me. Then he decided to remind them how he brought them out of Egypt, how he redeemed them from slavery, from bondage, how he sent Moses, Aaron, uh, uh, Miriam, how he protected them from the curse, how he gave them the true revelation of himself, how he gave them Joshua, how he gave them kings, even when it was just their own desire. God went to their level to do everything for them. And he said, testify against me. Where did I go wrong? Why are you doing this? And I think we can all apply this to ourselves, including my very self. Why are we doing what we are doing? Why are we treating God as if he has offended us? As if he has done something wrong to us? Why? What's he requiring from us? And let me chip in this here. For everyone listening to me, in our church, in this church, which God has given to our forefathers, and they have committed to us, and we, we, we too will soon go, and our children will take over, should Jesus tarry by the grace of God. Let me make this clear. This is not a club. This is not an association. This is not where we show up. This is not where we say, here am I, look at me. This is not where we puff up. This is not where we feel that we know anything, we can do anything, we are, uh, we, we are just who we are. We come to the church to meet God's requirement. We come to the church to learn of God's requirement. Yes. And if we have known God's requirement, we come to the church to pray together, to encourage one another, and to tell God that I want to meet your requirement. I want to make heaven. Yes. That is the purpose of coming to the church. It is not to come and show my new tie. 
This is not new. It's not, it's not, it's not to come and show uh, uh, what this ages ago. We don't come and show that, look at me. No, it's not a fashion parade thing, as far as we are concerned. It's a serious matter. It's a matter of life and death. This is very pertinent to our lesson of last week and this week and the lessons that we have been learning. God himself, I, I have somebody say, reminding us during the course of our contribution this morning that these are warnings. They are warnings for you. They are warnings for me. God has requirements. Yeah. And unless we meet his requirement, not my requirement, not your requirement, Unless we meet the requirement of God, we are in for it. But I thank God that he has given me another opportunity. Amen. He has given you another opportunity Amen. to tell God today, Lord, yes. I have been failing and I need your help. Yes. And when we say that, the Lord certainly will help us. Yes. Who, who are we anyway? Um, it was last Sunday, I think I was watching from where I was and also this morning. And we, are, we have been talking about, let us remember. Remember, remember, is it me? This uh, uh, young man that you see in front of you, am I still young? I think I am. Okay, you see this man that is standing in front of you that now wants to think of himself as something? You know my story. You know it very well. My parents could not afford to send me to secondary school. When I have to walk several miles to attend modern school, which is in between primary and secondary, because no money to send me to secondary, I have to go to the one in between, and I have to walk several miles without slippers. If you don't walk fast, the, the, I, I, my country, in Nigeria, is so hot, that if you don't walk fast, your, 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 the, the, the sole of your uh, feet will burn. Yes. You have to walk fast, like that. They will send me out for about six pounds per term, it was 18 pounds per year. In the early 70s, when Nigeria was just spending pounds telling, they would send me out of school for s several times for six pounds that my parents could not afford to pay. And many other things that I know I've gone through. So is it me that will remember that, irrespective of what the Lord has done for me today, and I want to say that I'm something? God himself will even prove it to me that you are nothing. Yeah. But I won't get to that level. No. I will let God know. Amen. First of all, God, I am nothing. Yes. God, you are everything. Yes. Yes. God bless you for all those wonderful contributions where we have all made it very clear to ourselves that whatever we do is God doing it through us. He can do it through any other person. It's God after all. May God give us understanding. Yes. In all our varying situations, and now, God is saying, I have a controversy with you. You are not thinking right. You are, you are, you are not having a sober reflection. Just sit down and think of where, the songwriter says, where you have brought me from, and then where I could have been. Why are you doing this? Why are you kicking against the pricks? In verses 6 and 7 of our text, Micah, these people decided. Now that we have heard that God has said that there is a controversy, we are going to take a step. What step did they take? They heard the charge and then they offered a proposal for settlement with God. They expressed their desires to be at peace with God upon any terms. You can see the kind of thing they were saying there. They were bidding high. They were ignorantly zealous. They did not bid right when they were talking about where we shall I come before the Lord, bow myself before the high God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, cars of a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, ten thousands of rivers of oil? Why going all that way? First born for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sins of my soul. Why going all that way? And God is saying, those are wasting efforts. You are just wasting your effort. You are wasting your time. 
because I'm not requiring for anything like that. You know what? The gospel is not complicated. Let us get it right. The gospel is simple. What does he say? Obey. It's better. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Some people love sacrifice more than obedience. They turn the Bible upside down. When God is saying, my requirement is simple obedience, just obey. When you obey, leave the issue of the sacrifices to me. Then your sacrifice will be acceptable. He doesn't require sacrifices of work. The sacrifices of our money, our position, our benevolence. Then verse 8 says, he hath shown thee. Has God not shown us? What is requiring? And what God is requiring is a good thing. Something worthy, something decent, something nice. Very simple. Do justly. Do justly. What does it mean to do justly? To render to all their due. Render. Husband, render to your wife your wife's due. Wife, render to your husband his due. To do justly. Do justly. In marriage, in work, in relationship. Do wrong to none, but right to everybody. God can help us to do that. Amen. God can help us to do justly. Amen. Render what is due to everybody. Do, that's what the Lord is requiring. He said, all this you're jumping up and down. All this your, uh, uh, your effort. Your, I can do it. I know how to do it. I am this. And I don't want that. I don't need it. Just do justly. Okay? Move on from that. He said also, to love mercy. How can you love mercy when you have not obtained mercy? When you don't even understand the meaning of mercy. He did not say he has shown mercy. He said, let it be something from the heart. Many times we misinterpret mercy. And that is why he's, he's saying, love mercy. Let it be something that is from your heart. To love mercy. May God help us to, first of all, obtain God's mercy. Amen. If you have obtained God's mercy, you will know how to love mercy. How do we obtain God's mercy? When we think of all that we deserve, the death, we deserve the punishment, we deserve uh, the, 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 the way God should deal with us according to our sins, and God didn't do that. We cried to him, we begged him for mercy, we begged him for pardon, we begged him for the blood of his only begotten son, and that blood, because of Jesus, God heard our prayers, he showed us mercy, he forgave us our sins. That is mercy. Have you obtained mercy? And then he says, to walk humbly with thy God. Our lesson has dealt a, a, a wonderful, uh, 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 what we should have as far as being humble with God. Humble with God. Bring every thought into obedience of Christ. Without meeting this requirement, even the most costly services we do, they are vain oblations, they are abominations, they are iniquities, they are eyesores, they are useless. You can be a pastor. When you don't meet this requirement, you can give yourself to be burned. Whatever you are doing, God is saying, I, I have no interest in that. That's not what I'm requiring from your hand. That's not what I'm asking you to do. God told the children of Israel in the book of Isaiah when they were doing something like this, the first chapter of the book of Isaiah, if you look at verse 12 there, God says, who has required this from your hand? This your zealous. is for the show. All this your many prayers. It is not from upright heart. It's all hypocrisy. And all this will lead to double iniquity. This is your men pleasing attitude. This is your self-glory. That's not what I want. 
because you are missing the mark. Then he told them from verse 16 to 20 of that, Isaiah chapter uh, 1, um, then he gave what is required. Repentance and reformation is all I'm asking you to do. Cease to do evil, learn to do well, put away all habits of sins in, the, in your heart, and let us come and reason together. That's what the Lord is saying. It is God's requirement that we are saved. It is God's requirement that we are sanctified. It is God's requirement that we are baptized with Holy Ghost and fire. Yes. It is God's requirement that we make restitution. Yes. It is God's requirement that we live in peace, mm -hmm. both in our family as well as in our fellowship, one with another. It's God's requirement. It's not the question of if I like, I do it. If I don't like, I won't do it. It is his requirement that we obey him, we obey the government, we obey those that he has put in authority over us. It's his requirement. It is not man's requirement. It's God who has said it. May God help us to obey God. May God help us to follow God. It is God's requirement that the husband must love his wife. Do you know that? Let us, let, let's keep on reminding ourselves about that from time to time. It's not just a question of um, a philosophy or um, um, economic theory or something like that. Nothing like that. It's directly from the mouth of God himself that we should, it's a requirement. If you have married, you must love your wife. If you have married as a lady, you must submit to your husband. It's God's requirement. We can't take that out of the Bible. Children, Obey your parents. It's God's requirement. It's not the other way around. And what we see these days is the other way around. Parents are obeying their children. It's the other way around. The, the, the right way is the God's way, which is children obey your parents in the Lord, of course. Are we doing that? It is God's commandment that we are holy. When we learn the requirements for something, what do we do? What do we do? If you need something and you know about the requirements for it, what do you do? If it is something that you want to do, something that you want to have, something you are, you are in need of, you walk towards it, isn't it? Yeah. It's, just not, it's just normal. It's just, it's, it's, it's just like something very straightforward. You say you want to be a teacher and you just want to learn the trade of plumbing, as I was, a plumber, and I want to be a teacher in the university. They don't go together, do they? If you want to uh, be a teacher in the university, you learn what they do in the university, you know what they do in the university, you apply yourself to it, you work towards it, and God can help you if it is the will of God for you that you be a teacher, you will get the job as a teacher when you have met the requirement. Isn't that the, the way it works? In everything in life. If we are learning every time God's requirement, don't let those words we are learning stand against us. Don't let those words that are coming out, we are even contributing ourselves, as well as the one that others are contributing, as well as the one we hear in the sermons or in the Bible study or in the Sunday school, we want to pray that they don't stand against us. Amen. Because on that day, it's going to be you and the word, the knowledge that God has given you. You stand together before God. Nobody will be there. We can say anything now. Actually, these days, people know how to use back door. You can use back door. You may not have a requirement for something, and you get it. You can do that with man, but with God, it's not possible. When we know that God is asking us to do something, we want to be sure that we do it. Remember the case of the ten lepers? When they went to Jesus, or they met Jesus, Jesus told them the requirement. You want to be healed? Go and show yourself to the priests. They could have said, but that's not... What, what a requirement is that? But the Bible is true. There is blessing in obedience. Yes. There is blessing in walking towards knowing what God is requiring and doing it. The Bible tells us that these ten lepers, as they heard Jesus, and they were going, they didn't get to the priest. 
It was on the way. They were healed. In the name of Jesus, all those who are sick, including me. All those who are sick, in Jesus' name, whatever God is requiring, let us purpose, let us decide, let us mean it in our hearts. Today, God, that thing you are desiring, because you just told these people, go and show yourself to the priest. And that, that was all. And they were healed. We shall be healed today in Jesus' name. Amen. You remember the uh, dead Lazarus? When they got Jesus there, he gave the requirement, take away the stone. He could have done that himself, but he said, take away the stone. Jesus, what, what is that? Compared to bringing uh, uh, the dead back to life. But there's a requirement. Even when those people found it a bit hard, in terms of, oh, Jesus, do you know what you are saying? Four days already. Stinking. Take away the stone. Take away, that's the requirement. You must do it. Yeah. And immediately they do that, they did that. What happened? Lazarus, yeah. come forth. Yeah. There is blessing in just simple obedience. May God teach us obedience. Amen. May we take away all those stones. That stone that is blocking. That stone that is at the mouth. And Jesus has been saying, and is repeating again to me today, to you today, take away the stone. Stop arguing. You remember the case of that one who came to Jesus what must I do to enter heaven? After Jesus told him, you need to do this, you need to do these laws, and oh yes, I kept all of those. I have no problem. I'm fine. Jesus said, look at him, and he had compassion on him. There is only one more thing, because God's requirement is 100%. Yeah. You can do 99% with man. You say, wow, wonderful. That's nice. But with God, it has to be everything. Now, Jesus looked into his life. There's just only one more thing. And what is that? You know, all that you have, requirements, we are talking of requirements, all that you have, go and sell, okay, what you have, give to the poor and follow me. Requirements. The word of God tells us that he looked at himself. Go and sell what I have. The poor... You know, we, we rationalize. How did they get poor? I know all that I did to be rich. Now that which I worked for, go and give to the poor, and then come and follow you. Leave what? The Bible tells us that he left away sorrowful. May you not go away sorrowful today. Amen. When you decide not to obey God, when you determine, come what may, the requirements of God to you is unreasonable, why do you want to live with sorrow in your heart? Because that doesn't bring joy. It doesn't bring happiness. It doesn't bring uh, uh, contentment. May we not go with sorrow. Amen. May we not rebel against the requirement of God. This man rebelled against God's requirement and he went away sorrowful. Perhaps one more case of Naaman, that great man, that honorable man, that mighty man. But he was a leper. And he heard that he could be healed. And he believed. And then he received a letter and gifts. He decided to travel. He has made great effort. And now when he got to the door of the prophet of God, Elisha, with his horses and chariots and to give, you say, if I can heal me today, I'm going to give this to this man of God. I'm going to do that. He got there and then the requirement came. Unreasonable. You want to be healed? Seven times. Not three times. Not four times. Not one time. And not in that beautiful river that you have. Elisha could have said, go back home. That Parfa and Abana river, any of them choose. They are clean waters. Just dip yourself and come out. You shall be healed. No, no, no. Mm -mm. The local river. The one that is disgusting. The one that you don't really want. You have to dip yourself seven times. 
when God requires you to dig yourself seven times, whatever that may be in your life, I pray that the Spirit of God Amen. will come down from heaven Amen. and saturate you Amen. with power to obey him. Amen. I must admit, I must confess, all of us must have had this experience one way or the other. It may be difficult. But we can pray for, we can pray for the grace of God. Yes. We, can ask, we can ask God to help us. This man was encouraged. This man was advised. May we listen to the advice of Amen. people of God. Amen. May we be encouraged Amen. when people speak to us, yes. when people reason with us. Yes. May we be encouraged. Amen. May the Spirit of God stand by us. Amen. I want to believe the Spirit of God was standing by a, a Naaman telling him, what they are saying is true. Just try. Maybe even reluctantly. Okay, everybody is saying it. Okay, let me go and do it. Remember, first time in, you may be thinking. Second time in, it has to be seven times. <coughs> when my seven times will come, may God help me not to stop at the sixth time. Amen. 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 You have to eat the old rule. Some people like sandwiches. We cannot do sandwiches with the word of God. In sandwiches, you pick and choose, isn't it? Yeah. Um, I want pickles. Um, I want cheese. I don't like um, lettuce. Um, it is um, ketchup or mustard. That's fine with, with um, um, sandwiches that you want. When it comes to the word of God, when it comes to the requirement of God, no sandwiches. It has to be the whole rule. And I'm not saying it is easy. But why do we come to church? <laughs> we come to church. Yes, yes, we still pray at home. But we thank God that we have the opportunity yes. to fall on the altar yes. and say, God, this is too much for me. God, this is too great for me. I don't have the power to meet this requirement. You can help me. God of Naaman will rise up in your behalf. In Jesus' name, Amen. and give you the grace Amen. to say yes. I will do that. And what happens? What follows when you do that? What happened to Naaman? You will be blessed Amen. with healing. You will be blessed Amen. with happiness, Amen. with joy. Amen. In order to receive from God, we must worship Him to worship Him acceptably, to work for God, to have His promise fulfilled in our lives. To live with God eternally, we must meet his requirement. What is it that God is requiring from you? Jesus is coming. Yeah. Jesus is around the corner. Don't delay. You know what you have been hearing from the word of God. You know what the spirit of God has been telling you. I know what the spirit of God has been telling me. Can we make today, can we seize this opportunity and just focus on God. I don't want to be like this. You have a controversy with me. I don't want to be in argument with you. I just want to meet that requirement. If I've forgotten, please remind me. The one that I've been pushing aside, no, today you must give me the grace to do it. Amen. That humble pie that God wants you to eat, all of it, and you are just uh, uh, slicing it here, slicing it there. Sli no, 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 God is waiting until you finish eating everything. I don't know what that, is, that, what that is for you. You don't know what that is for me, but all of us have it. I have mine. You have yours. But thank God for today, because Jesus is coming. Do you feel in your heart, in your soul, in your mind, that there is a requirement that God is really trying to make you to consecrate, to do, to meet, and you are finding it hard? The Lord will give you the grace. Amen. You will meet it today. Amen. And the joy of heaven will fill your soul. Amen. You will have today as a special day of your life, a day of testimony, a day to receive from God, a day of surrender to God, a day of submission to God, a day of receiving something special from God. Come to the altar and pray as we sing hymn number 681.
Well, Lord, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for speaking to our hearts. And we know that your, higher and your, your standard is quite high. And we are praying that, God, you give us the grace as we pray to, to meet your requirements and to pay the full price. And we know that it's, it's, it's not easy. If it was easy, then everyone would meet the standard. But we pray, Lord, that every one of us, from the youngest to the oldest in this place, who understands the concept of this message and didn't miss one bit, that God, as we pray, bring every requirement that we need to meet to our remembrance. Help us to settle the accounts. Even if it was, it's going to cause some pain. That pain help us to, to, to go through it now. And, Lord, we want to leave this place rejoicing. Yeah. Uh, we, we, we just want to pray that, Lord, even as, as imperfect and as, as sinful and as, as wretched we are, that your blood will interpose today yeah. and bridge the gap. And that your grace will bridge the gap yeah. and give us the enabling. Yeah. Thank you, Father. Yeah. This morning, save. Yeah. This morning, sanctify. Yeah. This morning, baptize. Yeah. Must also, this morning, heal. Yeah. May healing flow through this place. Even as those who are listening on the internet now, send your power to heal. Amen. Touch us. Amen. Revive us. Amen. Set us free. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray.